Hi, I'm Jamie Green, the Solar Queen, and for the last four years, I've helped hundreds of homeowners achieve energy independence with solar power. If you're new to the channel, this is where we answer your questions about solar panels and batteries and how you can gain energy independence. In this video, I'm going to be answering the question, can solar panels power a whole home? The answer is it depends, and it depends on a few things, and I'm gonna talk about each of those things in this video. The first thing that we need to understand is how many kilowatt hours did you consume or use in the last year? There are a couple of ways that you can get this information. The first way is if you have paper copies of your utility bill, go to your desk, pull out the file and look at the last 12 months. You're gonna write down the kilowatt hours that you use each month and then add them up. The reason why this data is important is because it's gonna tell us how many solar panels we're gonna to need to put on your rooftop to accomplish whole home energy um, being powered by solar panels. If you live in a state where there's one-to-one -one net metering, this is a wonderful thing because we can put solar panels on your roof and you can generate power that you might not use all at one time, but you can use at a later time of the year or a later time in the day even. If you live in a state where there isn't one-to-one -one net metering, we can hopefully achieve complete energy independence or uh, covering your entire usage with solar or cover your entire annual usage with solar panels and a backup battery. I'll talk about that in just a minute. But the first thing that we need to understand is truly, truly how many kilowatt hours you use on an annual basis. If you don't have your paper copies, you should be able to log in to your utility company's online portal and download the data or at least download the last utility bills from the last 12 months. You'll go through the same thing and write down the, the kilowatt hour usage per month, add it all up, and hopefully we can accomplish powering your entire, you know, your home and your usage with solar panels and eliminate the high, high utility bills and fluctuating utility bills and give you a, a predictable monthly payment if you decide to purchase the system and take out a loan. So that's the first thing we need to understand about your home is how much energy you use in an annual basis. When we talk and meet about solar for your home, we may even ask more questions like, are you planning to add a hot tub if you don't already have that? How about an EV? Are you gonna be purchasing an EV and charging it from home? And how many miles you drive a year? That's more important information to understand so that we can size your system appropriately. The next thing that we need to look at in considering whether or not solar panels can power a whole home is your roof. The roof is really, really important to understand the orientation to the sun. Do you have south facing roof planes? Do you have a simple roof line or is it complex? If it's complex, it's going to take multiple roof planes to put solar panels on and hopefully the roof is in newer condition. If you have an older roof, don't worry about that yet. We can talk about what it would take to re-roof, whether or not we have roofing uh, companies that we work with to re-roof your roof before going solar. And there are also ways that we can combine those two expenses and, and put it all into one, one agreement or, or, or solar package for you. The roof is really, really important to um, make sure it's in good condition before putting solar panels on because those solar panels are going to be powering your home and hopefully your whole entire home for 25 plus years. So that, that roof is really important. What kind of roof do you have? Is it an asphalt shingle roof? Is it a metal roof? Is it a foam roof? Is it a tar and gravel roof? All different kinds of roofs out there in America. And we need to understand the roofing material because if it's a roofing material that we can't install solar on, we need to know that and then discuss a possible re-roof to, to see if that makes sense for you to go solar so that you can power your home with the sun rather than continuing to pay the utility company. 
And all they're doing is raising your rates and there's no insight for anyone in America. The average rate increase for utilities across the nation is 4%. And that's just the average. There are some places in the country that rates have increased anywhere from 15 to 40% just in this last year. So solar makes a lot of financial sense and powering your whole home with uh, solar makes a lot of sense if we can put enough solar panels on your rooftop if we have enough roof exposure. So that's the second thing that we need to take into consideration of whether or not we can accomplish this for you. The next thing that we need to take into consideration is any shading that might occur on your rooftop at any given time of the day. If you live in a neighborhood where there's mature trees or trees that are protected from being cut down and they're like right over your rooftop, it might be a little challenging to accomplish whole home power from solar panels. If you live in a neighborhood where, um, you know, you have tall houses and then short houses and you happen to live in one of the single story homes and the next door neighbor has a two story home and they're right next to each other, it could be a challenge if depending on where you live on your cul-de-sac or on your street, if that house may cast shading onto your rooftop. We need to look at all of these things because it's going to tell us where we should place solar panels and if there we can place enough solar panels on those sunny exposed areas of your roof um, to accomplish and achieve whole home power from solar panels. So shading is a factor that we really need to look at. Um, there's other things such as the pitch of your roof. Is it a really steep pitched roof? and and um, how many sun hours we can get on that rooftop. And again, it goes back to roof orientation and whatnot, but shading does play a role and it can reduce the amount of kilowatt hours that are produced per kilowatt of solar. Um, that will be something we discuss in a solar consultation specific about your home. But if you know you have shading, take note of that. There are times when someone will come and say, I would like solar for my home. And then I go and I look on Google Maps and there's a huge oak tree in their backyard and their backyard is south facing. And we have to talk about what to do about that. <laughs> so, um, so, so shading does play a role. We need to look at that and Hopefully it won't affect too many people, but it is something that we need to factor in. The last thing that we need to look at when it comes to whether or not solar panels can power a whole home is your utility company's net metering policy. If you live in a state where their net metering is one-to-one, -one, that's awesome. That means when your solar system is generating power, like right now it's sunny outside and it's just me home, with a light and my camera setup and everything, I'm not consuming very much energy. All the excess energy, if I don't have a battery and I live in a state where a utility company allows for net metering, my solar energy is causing the smart meter, there's a smart meter on the side of your house to spin backwards. It's saying I'm sending power to the grid. And the utility company says, thank you so much, Jamie, for that uh, power that your solar system is producing. We're gonna take it and we're gonna sell it to your neighbors and we're going to give you a net metering credit to use later in the day when the sun goes down or later in the week or later in the year. That is net metering and it is something that helps you power your whole home for the entire year with solar panels. If you live in a state like California where you need to get solar and, and storage, what that means is you're gonna get solar panels installed on your rooftop. You're gonna use that solar in real time. Excess energy is going to go to the battery first. Once the battery is topped off or filled, recharged, then the goal is really to not have any excess go to the utility company. But if it does, you're gonna earn or receive a net credit from them um, on an annual basis. If you live in a state with net metering and you, it still exists uh, in your state, please get solar before your, your utility company or your utility commissioner for the state changes any net metering policies like what just happened in California. If you live in an area where the utility company is say like a municipal utility, uh, sometimes they may limit your solar system size. 
In some areas in the state of California, there are utility companies that won't let you size beyond 80% offset. What that means is if you use 10,000 kilowatt hours in a year, you can only put enough solar panels on your rooftop to generate 8,000 kilowatt hours. So we need to look at your utility company and see what are the limitations or how big of a solar system can you install on your rooftop. We also need to understand how you're built by your utility company because that might affect the way that we size your system to accomplish whole home power from solar panels. If you live in a, in a utility that still bills you based on the tiered billing system, that just means in a billing month that you are billed based on how many kilowatt hours you use. And there may be multiple tiers. And when you pass that threshold for the first tier, you go into tier two and the utility rate's a little bit more expensive, et cetera, et cetera. If you live in an area where it's time of use, where there's peak, off peak, mid peak, super off peak. We need to understand when you're using that power and making sure that we size the system so that we can make sure that it's not, at that point in time, it's not quite a 100% offset. We may need to oversize it slightly because there's a price difference in those, the value of the kilowatt hours of when the energy is produced. So if it's during the daytime, a lot of times in many uh, states and utilities, daytime is off peak. The peak time is when everyone's using power. So if you live in an area where you have time of use, we may need to size the system just a slightly bit larger to offset the differences in the values of peak and non-peak kilowatt hour rates. Okay, so that's it for this video on can solar panels power a whole home. To recap, it depends. It depends on how many kilowatt hours you use on an annual basis, how much roof surface space we have to work with to install enough solar panels to offset your energy consumption. It also depends on shading and your utility company. What are their limitations? What are their net metering rules? Um, do they let us offset 100%, 80%, or will they let us add more solar panels if you have enough roof space? It all depends on these things. So if you're interested in getting a solar quote for your home, please call or text me at the number below in this video. And I hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.